everyone's going to have a concept of speed, whether it be um, in a car, so you'd probably be looking at miles per hour or kilometres per hour, depending on where you come from. Or you might be thinking of um, a runner, okay, um, and it might be metres per second. But in all these cases, whether it be miles per hour, or kilometres per hour, or metres per second, okay, in all these cases, what you have here is always the distance. You never have seconds per meter. You never say hours per mile. So we always have the distance first. And we always have the time second. Okay, so speed has got something to do with distance and time. The amount of distance you cover in a specific amount of time. Now there's this word that we use all the way through as well, is per. What does per mean? Well per actually means divide. So distance divided by time, distance split up into how long you've taken to cover it. So speed is distance divided by time. And this is the all-important equation that we need to remember. Speed equals distance divided by time. Now, that leads you on to a nice representation of speed, distance, time in a triangle. Now some teachers like this, some teachers don't. It depends who you talk to. I don't mind it myself. Probably because I was taught it. So speed, distance and time. SDT. And you'll see that if you covered up the S then you get distance over time, distance divided by time. And that very neatly allows you to start looking at the other possible equations. Well, if I cover up the t, then I've got distance over speed. So we also have time is distance divided by speed. Now, if we covered up the d, ah, now we don't have a letter over another letter, we have two letters next to each other. And when you have two letters next to each other, as you may well learn in algebra, that means that it's the two letters multiplied together. So distance is speed times time. And so you have these three formulas that link speed, distance, time all inbuilt into this triangle, which we can now use to solve problems. So, for example, um, if a car, um, or let's say, okay, a car travels 21 kilometres in three hours. Okay, so it's a pretty slow journey. It may well be due to traffic. How fast, on average, does the car go? Not a particularly nicely worded question, but there you are. Okay, so on average, because we must say on average, because the car, if it's in traffic, can stop, start up again, stop, start up again. So at, at times it might be going at zero speed. Okay. So it's always best in these questions to underline what you have. Here is the distance. Here is the time. 
we want the speed. And we know that the speed is equal to the distance divided by time. So distance, 21, divided by 3. And so it is 7 kilometres per hour. And sometimes we can use that backslash to mean per. So that's how the formula can be used. So it's going at 7 kilometres an hour. Let's say, in another problem, we have um, a car travels at 40 miles per hour. Um, for 1.5, well, no, let's have, um, let's say 90 minutes. Okay. Uh, what is the total distance covered? In miles. Okay. Now, if you have a car that's travelling at 40 miles an hour for 90 minutes and we need to work out the distance, then use a similar idea to this. Highlight what we have. So we have the speed and we have the time. So we know that we want the distance. And distance is equal to speed times time. Now, you've got to be very wary here. Because if we now just say, well, okay, well, the distance is speed, 40, times by the time, 90. So 40 times 90 is 3,600. And because it's asked it for in miles, we put miles in the end. And this is a very common mistake. Because how could a car possibly cover 3,600 miles at 40 miles an hour for 90 minutes? It's just not possible, okay? It doesn't make any sense. So what's gone wrong is this. Because we are looking at 90 minutes rather than using hours. The speed is in hours, but the time is in minutes. And so we need to convert the time into minutes, into hours, sorry. And 90 minutes is one and a half hours. Now we're ready to do the multiplication. So we have 40, 40 miles an hour times one and a half hours, which is 60 miles. Now that makes a lot more sense than the 3,600. So, with speed, distance, time, the formulas are quite easy to use once you remember the triangle. However, you must be very careful with getting the units right. Because if the units are inconsistent, then it will lead to ridiculous answers.